So the system flow framework contains of two base building blocks. One of them is components and the second one are classes. So I've already explained components and I mentioned some classes that are included in components and also in the design uh, section. But now I'd like to dig a little bit deeper so that you have a great understanding of how to use classes and how to modify existing classes in order for it to take effect across the entire framework. So in the design section, you have typography and color and spacing and layout classes. And those classes I explained while explaining documentation. Now let's see how they work in real life examples. And let's create the first component here. Actually, I'm gonna use an existing hero video component. Let's select this hero left one video component and now unlink the instance. So this is usually the first thing that I do. I unlink the instance and now I can preview all of the components and uh, individual elements that are within this component. If you select them, you can see that here we have heading XL class and for the other elements in here you have other classes that we've listed in typography. So heading XL is here. Uh, it has a specific font size. It also has the spacing that we've applied to it. And uh, every element that you'll apply heading XL co combo class to will behave in the same way in, in terms of styling. So we try to be extremely consistent in the framework with the usage of the classes. And you can be sure that all of the components that we've created for system flow are using those classes uh, explained in the documentation. So this is really powerful because right now you can either create new elements and apply the classes so that they have the consistent styling or you can change the classes and then they will change throughout the whole framework. Let's add some body text. So if I've added body text, here we have the body text large class applied to, uh, to the other one in the component, but the one that I've added just now, it doesn't have any class applied. So I can go to mm, text um, classes, so typography section here, and I can apply those classes. So command return or control enter on the PC will uh, let me quickly create the selector. And now I start typing body text. Now it's best to use the arrow keys on the keyboard and accept with return or enter on PC. And here we have body text class applied. Now, if you press command return once again, you can select the combo class and those combo classes will uh, be listed. Only those combo classes will be listed here that are appropriate for body text. So I can apply small body text here and this small body text class is consistent across all of the components that we've created. So if you decide to change the um, properties, if you decide to change uh, the margins or padding or whatever else for this body text small, so S, it will change in all of the components. This is really powerful and I do recommend you to use the pre-existing classes that we have. And obviously you can just change and uh, suit them to your needs. Those classes are made for colors as well. And as you know, in CSS, you have different CSS properties for color of the background and different CSS properties for text color. And this is also why we've split those sections. So you have background color separate to text color. However, the swatches, the colors that are behind are just, this is just a one color primary 50 and it's defined in both text and background class you can apply those classes on top of one another. So if I press command return, now I can use, let's say text uh, or background color class on top of this body text as combo class. So let's press uh, C and then T and you can see that I now have the list of the colors. I can apply color text primary 60 on top of that and this will change to my blue uh, swatch color. Also, let's say I want to change the background of this body text now. So I'm going to press command return once again, search for CB, so color background, and now select with my keyboard arrows, let's say error 10, and you have this light uh, red color applied as a background for the body text. So this is how you can uh, use those classes. I also have a class for text align center, which is TAC and short. And we use this short head, uh, short head notation for classes because it's super convenient. Now, as you can see, we have uh, five classes applied and still this is quite easy to read and understand. If we have instead like color, background, neutral, 80 or something like that, uh, it would make it really difficult if you have more than two or three classes to, to just manage in a Webflow. So uh, it's really easy to 
remember the naming convention for the classes. For example, for spacing, we have S at the beginning, so spacing, then we have P for padding, and then 32 will apply equal padding from each side. And the size is defined in pixels as opposed to uh, margins and paddings for the text classes that we use in RAMs for responsive typography. But in here you have pixels and you have quite a lot of lot measurements that you can use. Those are already predefined classes, so you can always change 32 to 64 or 48. It's super easy. And you also have uh, axes, so Y and X, and you have top right, bottom left, so that you can apply different classes for different effect that you want to have here. So let's uh, apply another class on top of that body text and that would be spacing, margin, and you have all the margins in here. So let's say 128 and that would add 128 margin from each side actually. And um, this uh, is uh, something that you can use for the specific resolutions as well. So you have tablet and below and mobile landscape and uh, below. So if you want to use uh, the specific padding or margins only for let's say mobile on, or mobile landscape uh, breakpoints you can do it with the specific class this is pretty useful because oftentimes we find ourselves adding just a uh, different padding for mobile versions and you can do it with one class you don't even have to go to this mobile version and tweak it it's enough if you add for example uh, spacing, then tablet, and you can say that uh, you want to apply margin 12, but only from tablet below. And if you go to tablet, you can see that this is actually 12 pixel margins here, spacing, while in the desktop view, we had zero. So this class works like this. If I remove this class, you see that uh, in the tablet view, I won't have any margins. Uh, I can also re rename the classes. And if I want to align left, I can align left, for example. If you get to know the classes and to just use them a few times, you'll remember the names and you'll just easily add them to all of the elements that you want to format. So we often find ourselves just uh, creating an element and then modifying styles, and then we automatically create an extra class. This is something that I recommend you to avoid. And for example, if you want to create an element, let's select this text, create, uh, wrap it with a span. This will create a new element. And if I want to format that, I just press Command Return, I press CT error 50, and now it's so much better than just changing the color, even if you apply the swatch to it. Well, it depends on what you want to accomplish, but this is so much better because you have this class applied. And if you change this 50 color, it will change across the entire frame framework and also it will apply this change to this particular element. So this is really important. Now, if I add another element, there is also something that I'd like to show you how uh, to modify the classes. Do you like go to the documentation first or maybe to the customize page and first apply all the properties to all the classes or you just do it on the fly. Well, you can do however you like. You can go to customize, you can go to any page that we have in the docs and then click on the elements in the docs and then, then apply the changes. But oftentimes I just mm, put the elements on the canvas and I unlink the instances and then I take a look at the classes that I have in here at the elements. And if I want to change something specific, I just change it. So if you are more systematic and you want to apply some design uh, style, uh, style guide or maybe a system design system, uh, at the beginning you can do it. But if you want to just create a landing page from the design, it's sometimes better to just you know, drop the elements on the canvas, then select those um, classes and change them accordingly. And you can see that when I select the body text large and change it to medium, it will change everywhere because everywhere we use this body text large class. So sometimes working on the canvas on the, you know, ready-made page that you create is so much more convenient. Now, we have the combo classes here. So body text large and body text extra large and stuff like this. So what if I just want to apply those settings to all of the headings. It's enough to remove the class and now all of the headings, they share this heading class. And we did it on purpose, so now you can easily change the properties of all the headings within one class. So let's apply 48 pixel margin on top of each heading, small, medium, large and extra large. And then 
let's reuse this combo class again. So I reapply the XL, but the heading class has been modified. And now it has 48 pixel spacing, both for heading XLs and heading large and small and, and all the other ones. So this is how you can just work with the combo classes and apply those settings to whatever class you want. And then just in case you want to reapply the combo class, you can do it. So uh, one more thing I'd like to mention if you don't want to spoil the class that's already existing. So if you add an element and have a particular styling for this element only, but you base on the heading, for example, and you copy and paste it, my recommendation is that you use on top of that some other extra class. So if you add my class, one, two, three, whatever name on top of this as a combo class, now the changes that you apply to the styling of this element won't count in terms of uh, the, the structure of the headings that you have on the side. So this will be very specific uh, styling changes to the element that you want to modify. So this is probably something that you will do for the individual elements that are just you know one of, uh, of the kind and you don't repeat them uh, across your layout. If you repeat them, uh, you can also do it like this, but then just make sure that this my class name is not that generic, that you have a specific name of that class that you will then reapply to, let's say, headings. And also be careful if you apply any other class on top of that your class, because now you are not editing my class, you are making the edits to text align left class, and this will propagate to all of the classes with text align left. So. This, is, this can be really tricky. In order to apply it to my class, you have to first remove this text align left class, then apply changes and then reapply the combo class. So yeah, sometimes it's a little bit tricky, but if you just uh, work it out, if you just use uh, some combo classes of your own, I think that you'll get it. And creating and using the uh, classes that we have in the framework, you know, this is just a hint. You don't really necessarily have to remember and search for all of the classes for all of your use cases. And if there is no class that exists in the framework, then you won't use it at all. No, it's sometimes it's just easier to start with the predefined classes, then command return, add your uh, custom class, and then you can go wild with the CSS and <laughs> make changes. Usually you'll make them to the, you know, this one specific local instance. But remember that our framework it is just a guidance for you. It's something that you can tweak and modify.